Okay, how to do a bell curve in Excel. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we got to get the data that we want. I'm going to sort this initially by um, date. Uh, so this is the data that we have here, the stock change percentage. First thing we got to do is we got to find the mean and the standard deviation. So to find the mean, we're going to do equals average, and then just the uh, the entire data has to be every single data uh, point with no errors in the data and no blank spaces. And same for standard deviation. It's going to be equals stdev.p in that, that uh, column. <clears throat> After we get those two numbers, we're going to do, uh, we're going to find the number that we need to chart it on the bell curve. So this is going to be equals norm.dist. Uh, and first we're going to choose the data number, uh, second is the mean, third is going to be the standard deviation, and then the fourth thing is a true-false. So we're going to choose false um, for this one. If we change it to true, which is this right here, we get the percentile that the data point finishes in. So this is a better way to, can be a better way to rank your data than uh, just a simple uh, rank function. Uh, so anyway, that is just informational though. It's not necessary for the bell curve. Uh, once we get this data here, we would after you do that, you would drag it down if it doesn't fill. And then we're going to do something similar to find the standard deviations. So <clears throat> with the standard deviations, it's a little different because whereas with this one, we have the, the data point and then we have to do these calculations to find the number uh, to put on the uh, bell curve. <clears throat> With this one, there's an added step because we don't know what the data point is. We have to find the exact data point for each standard deviation level, and we don't know that. What we do know is that uh, the, the probability, um, so it would be this one right here, uh, we know we know uh, that number, so we have to work backwards. And so this is a standard deviation chart, and you can see 34.1, 34.1, 68.2. That's one standard deviation, and so that's what these numbers are doing here. <clears throat> see, we have 0.5 in the middle, and then 34. Point whatever it was, 34. Point whatever there or 68 uh, difference between the 16 and the 84. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do equal norm.inv this time. And we're going to do the same same uh, numbers here. We're going to choose the probability of being below. And then we're going to choose the mean and the standard deviation. That's going to give us the exact data point. And then from there, we do. Um, we find the, the uh, number to place on the bell curve. So equals norm.dist, and then the data point, the uh, mean, standard deviation, and then false. So that is how you set it up. And now you get to graphing it. We're going to, first what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to graph the standard deviation. And uh, we're going to graph the actual data later. So first we're going to choose the standard deviation. We're going to choose the, the data points that uh, we get from norm.inv. And we're going to choose the, thing, the answer we get from the norm.dist. And we're going to come up here to charts. We're going to click on scatter plot. And we're going to find the one with smooth curves. <coughs> so now what we're going to do is going to pretty it up a little bit. So we're going to get rid of this thing in the middle here. And we're going to hide the line. And that's going to leave us with the standard deviation points. And then 
to show the actual numbers, we're gonna come down, we're gonna right click, add data labels, and that brings up these numbers. They don't help us very much, so we're gonna click on those numbers, right click, format data label, and this brings us to what we can change these numbers to. So we can change it to the X value if we want. And this shows us exactly which data points are at each standard deviation level. So for this one, <clears throat> if the stock uh, changed, if it went up between 5.71 and negative 4.42, it would be within one standard deviation. If it was higher or lower than that, it'd be greater than one standard deviation. You get the point. So the last thing we need to do here is we need to, it's optional, I guess, but you, you might want to draw lines downwards to sort of visually see sort of like uh, this right here where they have the lines down. So we're going to come here, we're going to go to, we're going to click on the, the points, then we go to chart design, add chart element, error bars, and the easiest one is just probably s standard error. Um, and we're going to click on the horizontal ones first. I'll bring this up and we're going to do no cap, percentage, zero. I'll get rid of those. We're going to click on the vertical. We want to keep the one below, but we don't want the one above. So we're going to do minus, no cap, percentage, 100. That brings them all the way down. If you want to make those thicker, you could format, um, format error bars. <coughs> So, so once we have that um, set up, now it's time to bring in the data. And so a couple things we need to think about when we're bringing this in. Uh, the first is that uh, when we go to select data here, and I'm going to change the name here. First is uh, which ones are which. So. The X values are going to be your data points, and so we got that there, and then your, oh shoot, and then your Y values are going to be the values on the bell curve. click OK and that's going to bring up probably a chart that does not look like a bell curve. Oh, okay, it does. All right. Um, let's see why it did that. All right, well, cool. Apparently, uh, sometimes you have to sort it by uh, smallest to largest. I don't know why this one is plotting it perfectly when it's not sorted smallest to largest because typically, um, but anyway, it's something to keep in mind. Uh, it could be because it's in Power Query. Um, if it's on a table, it may be different. So um, if you get something that sort of looks like uh, spaghetti noodles, you're going to want to sort it. I, I generally do smallest to largest. You know, sort the data, the actual data, smallest to largest. Um, you can also do largest to smallest, I believe. But uh, so once we get that chart there, um, then you can also add data points to the individual points. So we can on here add data labels. See, I got a lot of points, so it doesn't really help me that much. But if you wanted, to, if you had, didn't have that much, you could click on that, and that would show the points. If you wanted to do something else, you could click on value to sell, and you could do something else. So in this instance, what I want is I want the actual end date. So I can choose end date here, and it would show me 
the end date. So now I would uncheck next values. That shows me the end dates of each data point. If you don't, if you get something like this, you get a lot of data. You don't want to see everything, but you do want to see something. You can click on the individual cell here, add data label that adds it individually. You can also click on it and do something called a data callout. Right here, is, I think this is just in Microsoft. But, uh, that, I'm not sure what the difference is other than I see that it says 12.72 on there and it doesn't have it on this one. And there's different formatting, but anyway, that's an option too. So that is, that's how you do a bell curve. Alright, so the reason it was not um, sorting is because uh, you can see that the general outline with the data points um, that are the markers, but there's no line um, connecting these. And so if you had, you know, like five or six points, you probably you wouldn't be able to see the line. Um, so in order to add a line to it, you have to um, click on the data points here. You know, right click and then let's see, you format data series. It's already up over here. Fill in line and then if it's checked no line, you need to click solid line. And it's going to come out like that because the data is not sorted um, by uh, smallest to largest. So I'm going to click here smallest to largest then there it is now you have a line connecting it all I come down here do the largest to smallest should do the same thing same thing no change so it doesn't matter which one you sorted by just uh, you have to sort it 